All right, guys, RV Tech Pro here. I had a viewer request that I do a video on what tools I use every day in my profession as an RV technician. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm not at the big snap-on box because the stuff that I use mostly is gonna be on the truck being a mobile tech. So I will begin by pulling some stuff out and letting you see. We'll start with that tool bag. My tool bag just various hand tools so i'm gonna have wire strippers of different types and styles these happen to be knipex these are snap-ons a lot of different lights this one's a cobalt um, the bag is a cobalt i really like this bag bits some DeWalt bits. Love this pry bar, super useful. This is uh, one of the most useful um, tools as far as pry bars go. This Blue Point, which you can get it um, online from Amazon, from Middle Magic, it's like uh, way cheaper. Inside the bag, gotta have some Advil. You're gonna need that. Even those pliers, double joint, 45, needle those pliers. The automatic strippers, I don't really like these. I did a video on why these are not that good. They're, they can't handle the strong sheath of a lot of wire and I end up using these more. And bit set. This one just happens to be snap on. Oh, never even noticed that in there. That little truck for converting, uh, looks like a quarter inch drive. Different pliers, some diagonal pliers, hose pinch off pliers working on generators and stuff like that. You're gonna need need these when you're doing the um, uh, generator service and you have to change a fuel filter. These are gonna come in handy. You're gonna wanna pinch off that fuel line to keep gas from getting all over the place. And then just different screwdrivers. I got my, uh, I got some Husky picks. I did a video on this one, why it's so good. So I'll definitely keep that one in the bag screwdrivers, Husky, Snap-on. And yes, I will use the flathead screwdriver as a pry bar if I need to. And then striking screwdrivers, ratcheting screwdriver, some Tecton, some Blue Point, Locking pliers, these Knipex are great. Some of the best locking pliers I've had. Um, these Milwaukee wire strippers are great. I've had these for a long time. It's hard to beat them. Yes, I bought a bunch of different brands, but these are really good. Very close to those Knipex ones. Um, more flashlights, uh, Coast here. Got a snap on one there. Another Coast. Uh, gonna need this a little magnet you drop screws and stuff some electrical tape scraper slash pry bar because i do use it um i, I use it because it's striking i can hit it into the trim when you're working on the slide rooms and you got to take the uh, facial boards all off you can hit this in there and pop it off because of the way it has that chisel tip it's great for that if you work on airstreams um, and other high-end campers with the um, ice cream truck style windows, you're gonna wanna use some type of plastic tool 
to pop those windows out um, in the summertime, they do get stuck, the rubber sticks to the window. So you're gonna need something that's not gonna break them to do that. And that's basically the tool bag in a nutshell. So that's what I guess people will call for a technician everyday care. You're gonna have your load out in the tool bag. Put that down here. In the toolbox. It's got different connectors. Um, I did a video on these. These are solder connectors, so it's like heat shrink and solder all in one. So I have those anchors, definitely gonna need that. Stuff's always coming loose in campers. Those, uh, you know, everything's thin in a camper. Eighth inch thick paneling, stuff like that. More lights, you're gonna need a lot of lights. Headlights, another headlight that I got off the Snap-on truck. Gloves, more lights. This is like some, I got a, had a Harbor Freight. It's a spray on electrical stuff, non-contact spray. So thought I'd give that a try. Very important magnetic tray. This one happens to be a blue point. It was only like 20 bucks. And um, you need some of these when you're tearing stuff apart. There's nothing worse than losing the screws or having extra screws left over when you're done. That means you didn't do it right. And then I have uh, my big sockets, three quarter drive sockets down here for hitch work. So I chose to go with three quarter drive because I fifth wheel hitches and even just sway control hitches, anything from an E2, uh, R3 curve, blue ox, all that stuff. You're gonna need big sockets to work with those resetting hitches. So you're definitely gonna need some big sockets. All right. My tables, as you can see over there, these come in handy whether you're mobile tech or not because these tables You got your big toolbox and you're working somewhere else. These tables are great because you can pull up to the camper that may not be near your workstation. And pull these tables out and then you can start laying out your stuff. You're going to want to get one of these. Yes, I had to mark my name on this because people are not all moral. And what you wanna use this for, it's a, it's an antenna. You're gonna run into this a lot working on campers, troubleshooting the TV antenna. Very common issue. And you can save yourself a lot of trouble by going to the booster location where the button is to turn this on and off, get you a jumper, plug it in, to what would be the wire that should be going to the roof where the one is on the camper and see if the light lights up. If the light lights up, then you know that you have power and your booster is working. You could run that jumper all the way outside, do a channel scan, and you could see if you have an issue with your wire run. So, I mean, it's a very versatile tool. Something that, you know, I don't, I don't see anybody else doing it, but I've always kept a spare booster and a spare antenna and I troubleshoot cable TV issues and stuff very quickly. All right, next. What we have here, the power tools. So I keep my DeWalt stuff, it says black and yellow. This one says red tools. So in this box on the top, you're definitely gonna need this stuff. This one's a heat gun for working with that heat shrink and stuff like that, doing outdoor connectors. They need to be heat shrink. You know, a lot of people don't do it, but 
got a lot of crappy techs out there. Um, drill bits. And then uh, different drill drivers, impact drivers, right? You're going to need that stuff. Extra batteries. So I keep some in 12 volt. And one reason that if you if you can't get but one, go with the 12 volt stuff because when you're working on Schwintech and different, most things in the camper is 12 volt. It's a 12 volt system on most of them. You know, you can use this battery as a power source to run your motors in and out on slide rooms and things. So this is this becomes uh, a nice little tool. So that's something that you can do if you have the 12 volt line of tools more bits more bits you're gonna need a lot of bits and one of these for tight spots i have different right angle drills and stuff none of them are smaller than this maybe the one snap on i got one snap on tool that is about this size or smaller so this is a a great tool you're definitely going to need long extension that's going to save you a lot having a long quarter inch shank extension countersink bit you're going to need this um, a lot of times the shop where you're working at they'll have those countersink screws they don't have a countersink bit you got to use them this screw head sticking up like that that's that's to me, that's a sloppy install. Use a countersink. Get you some countersink bits. Countersink the hole first. All right. Of course it won't close. That's why we got the tables. Below that. We've got the red tools, and a lot of these are not in here. Some of them are scattered, and I just got it broken down to like the the main stuff. Screw gun. This is not a drill. This is just a screwdriver gun. Low power keeps you from tearing stuff up. A lot of mechanics love this for doing interior work. If you're working on motorhomes and things like that, trim and panels. It's nice to have a gun that's not super powerful like the impact drivers where you're driving in a screw and some hard plastic and it snaps it and tear up a part it might cost you two three hundred dollars because it's a it's a molded part that goes inside of a vehicle got the uh, milwaukee hacksaw and i keep my blades in there snap on right angle like we're talking about you know oh that's not good. Look at that. You press that hard, it still goes, even when it's locked out. That's not good. But um, snap on, right angle, screwdriver drill thingy. I like the paddle on it. it it's smaller than my DeWalt one, which is why I bought it. Um, this is a tool that you, you do want to get off the truck or order it online. I got a guy I got a, that I did a video on an ebay that sells all this stuff basically half price i mean just buy it from him i i've done sh tool trucks and stuff but i buy stuff from him too because i'm not paying you 500 dollars when this guy's gonna sell it to me for 250 and it's brand new in the box i bought a lot of stuff from him. but what it is takes those bits so you put that quarter inch bit in there and it's a ratchet, but you can use it um, as uh, to remove screws and stuff. It gets in really tight spots. This is super handy. Super glad I bought this. It was expensive. I did buy it off the truck. I think it was like with the batteries, like 500 bucks. Got the Milwaukee, um, kind of a version of a Dremel tool. It, it takes a disc. This was an abrasive disc. You know, it's all the way. It's been used all the way down. I use that from getting in tight spot, cutting off bolt heads and stuff like that. Different type of little fabrication issues that you'd run into. This is awesome tool. So glad I bought this. This is very versatile. And I do use the Dremel um, 
I used the Dremel blades in here. So I got an X lock in here right now. Let's pull that out. Super easy to change the uh, blades on that. So these are the red tools. Hold that to the side. All right. These are some boxes I bought recently, and so I'm keeping my sockets and stuff like that in there, Allen wrenches, sockets, ratchets. I have those in the bottom, and in the top, I have all kinds of stuff. I got some picks, some more screwdrivers, plastic pry bars, um, pipe wrenches. This is a specialty tool um, for cleaning out the water heater. So when you're doing your water heater service on a camper, put your water hose on there and flush it out, decalcify. This is a very good ratcheting PEX connector tool. And it has a light on there. When you get to the right, when you squeeze it to the right size, a little blue light comes on. It's made by Apollo. This is the removal tool. It comes with two different blades to take off the PEX connectors, which can be a pain if you don't have something to do that with. That's also what I use that Milwaukee wheel for. So this is the removal. Um, I also have this PEX tool, which is ratcheting. That's gonna be very helpful um, because it lets you get in the tight spots and it, and it holds. Once you squeeze, it holds. So, um, and then you're definitely gonna need cutting pipe, a ratcheting tool for cutting pipe and hose. And then I also have like cable TV tool. This is a special cable TV tool that will help you on one end, you can screw on the coax connector, like pulling wire or something. And on the other end, this is the 7 16th wrench for getting the coax off of the back of TV. So if the TV's mounted, you got to get behind it and you can't really reach it to tighten it up or to loosen it. You're going to need this guy. All right. When you're working with different motors and window blinds, or hmm, shades, even the awnings on like the uh, Airstreams and other high-end motorhomes that's using that uh, Thule type awning. These are what you turn and set the uh, potentiometers with these little tools, All right? That's basically that. And then on the top, I have all my parts in this parts organizer. So I have my Wagos, my wire nuts, resettable fuses, regular fuses, pecs, cable TV tools. You're gonna need that. Some compression tools. So this is a toner. You're gonna need one of these um, to tone out cable TV lines barrel connector and it this is a very valuable tool i used to be a cable tv field service technician for about eight years and um so you screw that on one end of the cable and then you go and you use this end to find the wire so when you're troubleshooting tv satellite issues coax this is very good a little pocket toner device for that this is your compression tool for crimping on these cable TV connectors. This is the wire stripping tools that preps the wire for it. So something you definitely don't want to have. These are all common tools. All right. Move that off to the side.
Need a mat. Crawling under. Definitely gonna need something to keep the campers from moving while you're working on them. So you're gonna need your wheel shop. Electrical tools. This is a long video. Okay. On the electrical side. This stuff's important because you're gonna have a lot of electrical issues in campers. This thing you don't have to get this, but it's something that I recently picked up. It's a temperature probe for magnet sticks to the refrigerator or whatever you're working on. It's a dual temperature. It has one sensor in there and then one probe. It helps out. You're going to need a good multimeter. One of them needs to be a clamp meter, true RMS for working on like generators and stuff like that you need. True RMS, you really only need that for the AC side. So I basically have one meter that I use for like AC stuff mostly. And then I got another meter that I use for DC stuff. So this ideal, if I'm working on AC, I'm using this. If I'm working on DC stuff, I'm using my flute. So I use this little fluke, it's small, it's handy. I'm using this little Fluke 107 for my DC stuff. This is a special tool. It's really expensive. So I bought a used one off of eBay because a brand new one is like $600. And this is a special, it's a, it's a basically a TDR. It tells you how far away from a short or an open you are from a, when you're working on a circuit very handy helped me out a lot on the last job i was working on which was a dc issue in a slide room where none of the 12 volt worked in the slide room this saved me a lot of time this is by far the best dc you know low voltage tool and it's it's a version of a power probe you know everybody know the name power probe and um this thing is invaluable this Ansel one, it's like $70 versus the the old Power Probe, which is like, even they sell the Power Probe brand in Harbor Freight, and it's still $130-something. So I bought this one. It works great. I would not buy the other one because this one works great. I got this uh, Schumacher battery tester. It has uh, load testing capabilities, so this is very quick especially if you're an RV tech and you work in a shop and you're on flat rate and you just clip these leads on real quick and get the measurement, hit the button a few times, run through the test, you know, set the cold can and amps, do a quick load test, make sure your battery's good before you send the unit out. I have an assortment of different toners. These are South wire. Um, this one's a flute and definitely going to need some good toners because like I said there's going to be a lot of electrical problems working on RVs and you need to you need good stuff so you can get to the problem quickly this is the booster that goes with that antenna I was telling you about I always keep certain test equipment so I got solar test equipment I got antenna test equipment I got different items that are not tools but I use them as tools just from my experience. Different leads and connectors, which are some of these. This is a uh, fish tape, That's, don't need that. You're gonna need uh, you know, a tester for when you plug it in to the seven way, because a lot of times people have issues with their truck and they say the trailer lights don't work on the camper and it's really just their truck and at that point, you're not gonna get paid to figure out what's going on with their truck, especially when it's brand new and you take it back to the dealer. 
and this will let you know if their truck is working keeps you from running around checking stuff on a camper that you don't need to check this is a advanced little socket tester but this one is powered it takes batteries i like it it has a gfci tester it's made by klein this is a tool for splitting uh the sheath off of romex and uh without using a razor which almost always is going to cut a slice in the sheath of the internal conductors which you don't want so that's what this tool is i have another tool that does the same thing made by snap on which works a lot better actually definitely going to need this do a hot skin test anything like that you're definitely going to need that i don't know why it's going off because uh there is no ac voltage around so it's probably got knocked around maybe i'll change the batteries or get rid of it infrared detector temperature that's quick and easy way especially when you want to get your ambient temperature you should be using one of these type thermometers to actually test the temperature of a refrigerator or an air conditioner these are not approved as far as certifications go when you go to school if you choose to do that like i did this is not an approved method of checking a refrigerator or an air conditioner it's just not accurate enough i want you to use something like this or the type that the temperature probes that go on your multimeter and this multimeter does have a temperature probe or something like this is an approved device for that got a no contact 12 volt circuit tester when you touch anywhere around here your body becomes the ground so you can just touch something that's grounded and then you can hit the hots and it will light up and beat pretty helpful you're gonna need some of these i got this set from harbor freight lang makes a pair they're retractable uh, leads for alligator clips and of course i have wago connectors all over the place because these are my preferred electrical connectors all right to this next maybe stuff right because you did ask about that so besides taking things like these and using them as test device creating them to be tools which helps out a lot there are some things that you just have to make um, this is a manometer I use this for doing your low pressure drop test for testing gas I use a digital one and I've rigged up that in for when I have to do it on the stove but the proper way is to use an approved test device. You can't buy this anywhere. You have to make it. This is one of the devices that you're going to make in school. If you're going for your certification, you're going to end up making one of these and they can be uh, modified with different ends to fit different size, the main line coming off of your regulator. This is the approved method. This is another approved method. Um, when I went through classes at RVTI, you can take this and put it in an LPG port. And instead of having to break those flares, you can, if, if you have an LPG port, a lot of campers don't have it. But if you do have it, you can do your low pressure drop test there and you can test your gas pressure using this guy right here, which is, this is a lot quicker. Like I said, flat rate, you need to be quick. This one, they're both just as accurate, 
but this one's quicker to use. So this stuff is like gas stuff. Um, gonna need a sniffer. Helps you find the leaks. This is something else that you just have to make. It is for doing a water pressure test. Had this for a while. Yeah, somebody broke it. The glass is cracked, but it's the gauge still works. This is a specialty um, in that I had to buy from the college. And what it does is this little piece that sticks out holds the check valve in on the city water inlet. And then the gaskets help keeps the water from coming out. You screw that in, you take your air, you pump that up to about 90 PSI and there's a 10 minute test. If it drops within those 10 minutes and you have a leak in your water system, and this is gonna be your um, fresh water system. It's not gonna test the sewer. This is just for the plumbing. So this is uh, another one of those special tools that you just have to make, but it serves well. Very quick and easy way to find a leak. Okay. If I can get this to get back in here. And then this is this another parts organizer, different parts and stuff in there. I got oh, oh yeah, I can't open this box because of these boxes. So I have to move these boxes off to open this rolling box. Something else you're gonna need. Oh, I see the water's getting into that box. I'm gonna have to check that one out. Boxes are supposed to be waterproof. Um, test TV. This is gonna be your friend. Just spend the money, it's only like 130 bucks. and get the test TV. I'm going to be moving this and keeping that inside my truck since I see that this box, this is the first box that I've seen that water's getting in here. So I'm glad I did this video because I found out about that. This is a $700 impact gun that I don't want getting messed up. So uh, I'll definitely be doing something about this box. But what I have in here is a circular saw brad nailers some uh coax test wire stuff like that um, i have to do something i have to move this box on the inside of the truck because i see that at some point some water has gotten in there got past the seal so i'm gonna have to do something about that so i'll be moving that box on the inside of the truck so far none of the other boxes had any moisture in them so this will be my only box that's been compromised. Uh-oh. All right. And the last box. Okay, more power tools. You need a lot of power tools working on campers. You can get you a scope. I didn't pay that much for this one. Maybe $150. That's going to come in handy. You're going to need that more impact drivers. This will save you this Milwaukee power caulk gun doing reseals on roofs and stuff like that. You're gonna need this. All right. Speaking of those reseals, you gotta scrape all that old sealant off. Don't need one of these oscillating multi-tools. I have the XR DeWalt. Then I have this Milwaukee, which I gave a bad review on because it's, it's not a really good tool. It is weak, but as you can see, it's very dusty. I do use my stuff, even if it's not the greatest tool. I'm gonna tell the truth when I do my tool reviews. It's not the greatest. The 20 volt versions that DeWalt makes and everybody else makes is better. But this one is awesome for doing towel. Just recently did a big towel job, had to do a whole bathroom did not cut out once doing towel. So it is now for me, a towel saw. And uh, 
different hammers and stuff in there. Wrench extender. This is great. You got to get more leverage on the wrench. It is worth it to go ahead and get the snap on. Uh, high performance, three quarter. You're going to be using that a lot. And see that? It gives you a lot of leverage when you got something that's real on any wrench and you got something that's really tight so that's a good tool and like i said the rest of the stuff in here is just like hammers and hole saws and different kits and stuff like that different wrenches so that's the most of it yeah you need a set of wrenches but everybody knows that i got other stuff on the uh, inside i'll go grab a couple things So if you're doing motor homes and messing with trucks and stuff, installing light kits, you're going to need to have a scan tool because you're going to set codes and the customers are going to freak because their check engine light is now on after you've touched it. So you better have a good scan tool so you can scan it before you work on it and scan it after you work on it, especially if the light comes on so you can clear all that off. So I keep a professional level bi-directional scan tool with me at all times. A jump box, uh, you need one of those. I use the, uh, the NOCO. Uh, this is the one that I use. Um, it's great. It works fine. I've never charged it but once since I've had it. And I've used it a few times. And, uh, you know, it's still charged up. So this one works good. I've heard people have problems with the smaller ones. So I got the 3000 amp one. I don't have any problems with this. I've never really had to jump my truck off. But I've had to use it on other people's vehicles. My Camaro. I have an old school Camaro in the back. Uh, my G35, I've boosted that off before with it in my lawnmower a bunch of times because it has an issue with the battery. So that's about it. That's the stuff that I use on a regular basis. A lot of the other stuff that I don't use very common, I keep in toolbox and that's why it's not on the truck. So this has been a long video. That's it for now. RV Tech Pro out.